Tofe ya humange, tofe ya humange. Tofe ya humange, tofe ya humange. Bongo bong ya humange, bongo si ya humange. Bongo bong ya humange, bongo si ya humange. Hey yo wa humange, hey yo wa humange. Yebene fenena, yebene fenena, yebene fenena ya pasere ya wale. My name is Linda Rollins, L-I-N-D-A, R-O-L-L-I-N-S. I hand make these beautiful one-of-a-kind dolls. I never use a pattern. Each doll is one of one. I hand paint the face. Uh, I make all the clothing. Everything is totally handmade. Do you love doing this? Oh, I love it. I love it. I get up at night. I work on my dolls. I wake up in the mornings. I work on my dolls. Everything is about this, these dolls and my mission of love. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this over 25 years. My dolls are unique because they're very rare because they're only one of each one for now. Um, later on, we're going to mass produce so little kids can have these dolls and play with them, hug them, hold them, and love them. Um, the, ones that I make right now are mainly for art purpose only. They are very rare. They are one of one. I never use a pattern. This house here is a house of love. I've taken care of my grandmother who had an enlarged heart, my, grand, my daddy who had lung cancer here, my mom who has had six strokes, three disabled kids, two with sickle cell disease, and one mentally disabled with Prado Willie. And I asked God after taking care of everybody, what am I supposed to do? And I was shown to make these dolls. And when I would go to sleep at night, in my sleep, I would make dolls. So I would jump up, write down what I saw, and just started making dolls. And this is where I'm at now. Every time I wanted to give up, a voice came to me telling me to not give up because these dolls are going to be real big one day. So every night and every day I didn't have a social life. My life was dedicated to making these dolls because I knew that I was going to make a difference in this world with these dolls. Awesome. Awesome. Now the sale of your dolls is going to proceed uh, the Yes Foundation or the Yes Corporate? Uh, well, we're working on building a factory and we want to have volunteers or hire people to come in and mass produce some Pacific dolls that's going to support the Yes program. Also, I would like to help with breast cancer survivors here in the U.S. and homeless here in the U.S. So this mission that I'm going on and ONA is going on is going to be able to help people around the world. This is what we're, we're hoping that, well, we know that these dolls will accomplish that. One doll at a time for now, and this is going to be bigger than the Beanie Babies. I guarantee it. <laughs> what is YES? YES is an organization that I founded back in 2006 and in 2010 was awarded its 501c3 status. So actually now YES is also a, a, a nonprofit organization and YES stands for Youth Educational Supplies and our mission is to bring awareness to the conditions and teachers in Africa because right now the schools are not um, being funded by 
like here in the U.S., you know, the state and the county and the city spo uh, sponsor our schools, but in Africa they do not. So uh, back in 2006 was my first trip to Africa, and I was able to visit a school there, and that's how YES really evolved, was my first initial contact in 2006 with a school that was run down and I was just compelled that I had to come back to the U.S. and do something to change the conditions. So let's talk about how you two met. This is a great story. <laughs> um, well, actually, Linda and I went to Gibbs High School back in from 74 to 78 when we graduated, but we haven't seen each other since. So um, I've been traveling to Africa since 2006. and. You never set out to become like a philanthropist. You know, it just happens when you just, you're just walking down the street one day and you just see things and, it, and you say, I have to do something to change conditions, right? And I happened to go to this museum, this African museum that's located here in St. Petersburg. And this beautiful African doll was sitting on display and I'm like, is this for sale? It's like, yeah, it's for sale. So I purchased the doll. So I, contacted um, the owner of the shop again to ask him was there um, any way that I can get in contact with the designer of the uh, dolls and he says yes yeah, she was a local um, woman here in St. Petersburg her name was Linda Rollins and at the time when he mentioned that to me I said I went to school I was saying to myself I went to school with a, a Linda Rollins but just really dismissed the whole idea that it could be the same person Ona and I went to high school together, but we didn't know it when we first talked. She purchased one of my dolls at a museum over on Central Avenue, and she contacted me to buy more dolls. And when she, we talked for a while, and I found out this was Cynthia Clark that I went to school with 32 years ago, it blew my mind. So I had to partner up with Cynthia and her mission and make both of our missions come true. How do you see your dolls and YES accomplishing each other's mission? Um, what I see is a very, very big, over just a big dream. Uh, I would like to build schools, help with supplies, and for the kids that walk 10 miles just to go to school, I want to be able to help them get there a lot easier, to be able to learn and be able to take care of themselves and turn different places around in Africa. And I want to also say that YES is not a charity organization. We want to teach the schools how to be self-sustainable. This is why we, the dolls are so important. Building the factories to uh, actually produce the dolls, where you have volunteers come in and make the dolls. And also we want the children to make the dolls because we want to instill in them, um, teach them um, self-determination, how to do for themselves, how to produce uh, resources for their schools, to give back to their, their community and other schools around them. One of the ways we want to bring awareness to uh, raise resources to help the schools is to uh, partner with Linda Rollins, who is a designer of African dolls. And what we want to do is we want to build a factory here in the U.S., starting in the U.S., but we want to also expand it to Africa. But right now we're looking to um, get a building where we can set up a factory with sewing machines, fabrics, scissors, all the things that are needed to construct a doll. We want to actually have the children's, any volunteers, anyone that wants to change the conditions and help with the education of children in Africa can come and make their own doll and produce their own doll and actually name the doll and um, send it out to be purchased by someone. So this is all the development of being self-sustainable. So we're asking for all the help. Actually, we're asking for volunteers to help do this. And I always wanted to help out in Africa. And it was at the right time. And when she came over, 
I saw Cynthia. We cried. <laughs> we actually cried. Because <laughs> it had been like 32 years since we had seen each other. It was like amazing. And during our conversation, you know, Linda was showing me all, you know, her work room where she actually produces the dolls and her sewing machine. And then she started saying to me, well, you know, I've been fixing this sewing machine. I've been putting it together because it's broken. I, and I'm looking at her and tears are rolling down my eyes. I'm like, she's like, what's wrong? I said, you are not going to believe this. I have a sewing machine that's been sitting in my den for like eight months. You know, you can have this sewing machine because I don't know how to thread a needle. I don't know how to sew a button. I don't know how to do anything. But this is this is who the sewing machine was for. It was meant for Linda. You know, it, it has to be because my sewing machine was a $78 sewing machine that I fixed over and over and over because I was going to make this mission happen. And when Cynthia came with this $2,000 <laughs> sewing machine. <laughs> Let's talk about the, your, your nomination for uh, the BET award. I network with blackwomensconnect.com. Through blackwomensconnect.com, one day I received this email. And it was from Karen Pfeiffer, which is the CEO over Black Essence, Black Essence Awards. And it, she stated that I was nominated to receive an award. And she told me it would be in South Bend, Indiana on October 9th. And Ona and I will attend this Black Essence Award. And I'm hoping to bring back an award. <laughs> <laughs>